other strangers Believe me when I say Loving me is loving danger Your heart is bound to break I walk alone in the night Beneath the pale moon Loving's for the fools Baby, beware of my mind I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm, a, I'm alone wolf. I'm a lone wolf I'm a lone wolf I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lone wolf I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lone wolf I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lone wolf I'm a The parts you just saw me cutting out were these little guys here And this is going to be the, the switch that slides in this slot here Which I widened up and trued up off camera in between this and the last video, this try to get the angle here. Those silver marks indicate where the tracks have to go to clear the center. So I'm going to go out and TIG weld these in place. I'll set the first one. Probably take this out and slide it in there, and then tack the other one, and that'll give me the switch that will actuate this. And then I'm going to make a little lock pin behind it. And then some spring tension coming from this direction so you can push against the spring they'll come out and this little lock device here will drop down and then i'll figure out how to cut a nub in between there or weld one on or however i can do it so that this can work the way it's supposed to i'm still jury's still out on that system i, I just want to i want it to be more robust than the United Cutlery version because this is just this huge beastly knife. I don't want some I don't want these to flop around all stupid. But anyway, like I said, I'm gonna go weld this. Really I'm just gonna tack weld it in case I have to take it apart and then figure out how to sit down and scratch my head some more as to how to make that lock. Once that's done, then it's straightforward knife making from there. assembly and it bit me <laughs> and a little bit of going like this for quite some time to wear the mechanism you can push on it oh, they come out you can pull on them and they go back in that's the basic idea pretty cool I don't know. It seems like it's awful stiff. Of course, we don't have a milling machine here, so tolerances are probably iffy. I don't really like how this one's sticking out. Got a little bit of backlash in the gears. Of course, heating them up with the TIG welder probably wasn't the greatest. So I'm going to play around with some timing, scooting this in and out, and and stuff like that and see if I can get them timed a little closer. That's pretty much that setup. No, I might stop and work on something else for a little while just so that my head stays fresh. What I want to do. Ha! It's fun. Yeah, of course I can later contour these so that they got a nice detent for the thumb with some ridges filed in them so it's real quick and easy. I've gotten far enough designing this mechanism that I can figure out how I'm going to mount the handle and such. So I took it all apart and I made some measurements and did some planning and made some more paper patterns. And uh, pretty much I'm going to have it so that we have a tang that's sandwiched between these two plates. Of course we have to have shims to match 
these shims for thickness. And then one will be welded to the tang permanently. The other will attach from the other side. And that way, when I slide this little guy in here, I can put the corresponding plate over top. So then, say this one has the handle on it. We slide that from the other way, or slide that on there, roll it over, and then of course the handle stays with it. We're just pretending. So the handle stays with it, then this piece sandwiches from the other side, and then the bolts go in. And there's good news, the snow's gone. Well, at least off the trailer outside. Now I've taken all those paper patterns from in the house for all the extra parts to put the handle together. Traced them out on my different thicknesses of steel. I'm just going to plasma cut them out and then we'll clean them up with a grinder. Okay, now I've got to refine these a little bit more. These I've got to grind out to actually fit the corresponding sides. Probably do that off camera. And then I'm going to heat this up and forge it because it got a little wonky here. And I do need a, I do want a nice distal taper starting here all the way back. So I'll forge this piece. Ouch! Duh! It's still hot. And then once I get it forged and shined up, we'll TIG weld those guys on. To weld those guys onto it to give it the right length or same thickness. Yeah. Got a lot of things to do. So I'm gonna move inside the garage regardless though, because it's getting colder out here. Temperature's dropping.
something I'm doing between forge heats here is clamping the side plates on here with the shims in place and spot drilling through so that I can mark the holes in them because only some of them are going to be the same size a lot of them are going to be the next smaller size so I can tap it so that it's got threads in the other side and then some of them have to be drilled out to 5 8 to account for these gears so that's what I'm working on I'm not just standing around waiting for this thing to heat up but my propane pressure is really messing with me my tanks almost empty It's not heating up very fast. <laughs> Even though it's a small piece. I suppose you can't tell that it's only a starting to get orange. It looks blazing hot with the camera the way it is, but it's not that hot. That's pretty good. I've allowed the tang portion to cool down and anneal in the forge. And while I was doing that, I finished drilling all the holes and tapped what was necessary to be tapped. Everything in side A except for one hole is tapped because it needs to be tapped for the or the pass through for the other one. That's kind of how it works. <laughs> but right now I've got the handle kind of pinched in there with just pressure. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. The next step will be to uh, hog out the slot and connect over to the hole that the gears are running in. But yeah, that's where we're at for today.